Hi, this is Adam from Makerstate, and right now we're going to continue through the boss battle. This is part two. In this section, we're going to start keeping track of the hero and the enemy health, and we're going to use some variables to do that. Also, we're going to make a projectile item for the hero, which is going to involve using some cloning blocks, which is exciting. Um, to recap, in the last section, we created our hero sprite, our enemy sprite, and our projectile sprite for our enemy and we program movement for all of them. So let's take a look at that quickly. So here we have the hero moving left and right using the arrow keys, um, using you know, some if-then statements with some sensing blocks and some motion blocks. For the uh, enemy, we're using these pick random blocks to assign random positions for it to fly to using the glide block. And then finally for our projectile sprite, we are using a loop that basically says start at the dragon, point towards the hero or the player, and then continue to move towards the player until either hitting the edge or hitting the player, okay? And then stop the loop. So with that being said, right now we're going to continue building, and to start we're going to figure out how we can keep track of the health of our hero and our enemy. And the answer is we're going to need to use a variable to do that, which is in data. Okay, and so if a variable is a new concept to you, then just know that a variable is like a number with a name attached to it, okay? So we're going to create some, some variables, which are basically just saying we're going to store some values, and specifically in this case, we're going to store the value of the player's health and the value of the enemy's health. So we're going to go to data and click make a variable, and we'll see this little pop-up up here, and we're just going to leave... Um, this uh, for all sprites option filled in for now, and I'm going to call my first variable player health. I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to do that one more time and type in enemy health. And you'll see as I create these, we get some things that pop up. So first we see the variables up in the stage, um, and then we see set, change, show, and hide. Those are the four variable block options I have. Show and hide refer to the presence of the variables on the stage. We're going to show them for now. We're going to keep them there so we can see them. And what we want to do first is make sure that when the game starts, we set our player health and our enemy health to their starting value. So you can experiment with different numbers. I'm going to use 20 for now. Set my player health to 20 when the game starts, and then also set my enemy health to 20 when the game starts. And so again, I'm just using that set variable block moving it right underneath the when green flag clicked. And if we test this, now we see that both our player and enemy health start at 20 when we run this program, okay? Now what we need to do is use this change player and enemy health block to decrease appropriately the healths of uh, you know these sprites when they get hit. And so if we take a look at our script for the projectile from the enemy, we can start to try to figure out where we're going to insert some new code. And the answer is, by the time we get to the end of this repeat until we've either hit the edge or we've hit the player. So by using another if-then block underneath that, we can then decide which of those two things has happened. We can say if touching the player, then we'll know that at that point we should decrease the player's health. So we use that if-then statement with a change, then use the black drop-down arrow to select player health by negative one, right? We want to decrease it. So let's try that. If we let the player get hit by some fireballs, let's see if the health goes down. And there we can see in the top left-hand corner the number decreasing, right, every time we get hit. So that's working so far. Great. What we need to do next is first build a projectile attack for the hero, and then apply that same method of decreasing the health when we get there. So I'm going to pick a new sprite from the library this time. You can also draw one if you want, but I'm going to select this star down towards the bottom of the library and shrink it down a little bit using my shrink tool. Just shrink this down a bit so it's about the same size as the fireball, maybe even a little smaller. Okay, good. And now we can start worrying about writing some scripts. So we're going to do something a little bit different than what we did with the fireball. We're going to use an exciting new um, collection of blocks that are part of the control set that are called cloning blocks. And so there's three cloning blocks down here at the bottom. And we can use these to make copies of sprites. And there's three blocks here. We have when I start as a clone, 
create clone of myself and delete this clone. So I'm going to take one of these each and drag them into our coding view here. So we can you know, choose different objects to create clones of, but we're going to create clones of ourselves here. And what we're going to do is create a new clone every time the space key is hit. So every time the space key is hit, we're going to create a new one of these projectile tags. Okay? And for starters, we're going to steal a lot of uh, this code that's at the beginning of the fireball. We're going to apply the same mentality, except it's going to happen under this when I start as a clone block. Okay? And again, the basis of what we did for the fireball projectile was starting at the sprite that you know the projectile is coming from, pointing towards the sprite where the projectile is going, and then repeatedly moving towards that sprite. So again, the difference is this time that's going to happen underneath this when I start as a clone block. So let's take a quick look at that one more time and do just that. Go to motion. We're going to start with go to. We're going to go to the player sprite, the penguin, and then we're going to point towards the enemy sprite. And then eventually we're going to move 10 steps. But first, uh, that's going to happen inside of our repeat until loop, which we're going to set up the same way, repeat until either we touch this time the dragon, so we can say repeat until touching dragon, or repeat until touching edge is the other one. Until we do one of those things, we're just going to keep moving forward, okay? So at this point, uh, this star should be following a similar sort of path as our, as our fireballs do, but let's see what this, cloning, uh, what this cloning creates. So if we test this out, here we see we press the space bar and we see the star is moving. That's great, but they kind of stay stuck around the screen. What we need to do is add this delete this clone at the end of this repeat loop. And now when we do it, the clones should disappear upon hitting either the dragon or the walls, which they do. So this is working pretty well. However, you see we still have this pesky original star, the, you know, the kind of the, the pre-clone first version of the star is still there. And so what we need to do is find a way to first hide that, which we can do with the one green flag clicked, hide. And then we can show it again once it's a clone. So this will hide the original and then only show the clones once they are in the proper place and before they start to move. So let's try that out. Now we see the original one's hidden and the new ones appear and then disappear at the proper times. That's great. And so the effect of this is we can press the space bar a lot and shoot lots of stars. It, scratch tends to glitch a little bit if you try to create a lot of clones in a short amount of time. But in general, this is more than good enough for the sort of response we need for our player. Okay, so the last thing we need to do now is implement this same type of damage loss, uh, this health loss, I should say, that we have for the player, for the enemy. So again, we're going to take another if-then statement from control, put it underneath the repeat, and keep the delete this clone block below that, and then if the star is touching the enemy at this point, which we can uh, figure out using a touching, uh, it's touching, not key press, sorry, using a touching block, there we go, if touching dragon, then we can take a change enemy health, and we're going to leave that enemy health this time and say change enemy health by negative one. If the dragon's hit by the fireball, we change enemy health by negative one. Pretty simple. And so now if we play this, we have a real interactive sort of boss battle game here where both the player and the enemy take damage as they get hit by each other's projectiles. In part three of this, we're going to worry about figuring out when to end the game, you know, when a player or the enemy loses health and what to do when we end the game. Okay, and add some other nice little finishing touches. So make sure to come back for number three when we finish up this project. Bye.